Hello, hey everybody. Joey Sparks here. This is your reminder that God's mercies are new once again this morning. We said it yesterday, we'll say it again. Citizenship in the most consequential kingdom in world history. It's not ambiguous, it's not automatic, it's not unclear. So just as entering his kingdom has a clear moment, so too continuing in his kingdom has a clear path as well. We do not enter his kingdom in order to then keep living how we lived prior to entering it. Repentance is a significant theme of Luke's gospel account, and it continues to be a point of emphasis in this book of Acts, volume 2, as well. Remember in chapter 2, verse 37, these Jews cry out, what shall we do? They're heartbroken. Peter says, repent and be baptized. Change. He says, you have to address the heart condition that led you to choose your sin and selfishness and that caused you to crucify Jesus. Then you read verses 42 through 47, you see what life in the kingdom of the church looks like. They're sacrificing, they're sharing. There's a complete change of perspective in living. They're taking care of one another. They worship God through Christ, no longer through priests. All those happen because repentance happens. They're no longer living the same way because they're no longer in the same kingdom. Peter's second sermon, chapter 3, he closes with this line, God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first, that's the Jews, to bless you, notice this, to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. Despite having the law, despite being the people of God, the Jews were still living in their wickedness. And now they were living outside of Christ. So Peter attempts to persuade them to turn back to God by turning them to his risen son. You notice the verb, to bless you by turning you. We do ourselves a disservice and we present it inaccurately, if we pretend that repentance is a negative thing. It's a blessing to be able to repent, to be empowered to repent, and to enjoy the blessings that come with repentance. So we need to be careful that we're not overplaying that negative side, the painful side of life change. Kingdom living is necessarily changed living. John 18, verse 35, Jesus is in the process of being arrested, or he's just been arrested, and now he's standing on trial before Pilate. And he tells Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting. He would have let Peter and the boys continue with those swords in the garden. He never would have been arrested in the first place. But his servants act different from the world's citizens because... They seek a kingdom different from the world's kingdoms. Paul would tell the Thessalonian church, he reminded them, we exhorted each one of you, we encouraged you and charged you, notice, to walk, live, in a manner worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Because he has brought you into his reign on earth, the church, he now gives you the way of living. Walk in a manner worthy of God. Don't, you can't walk like you walked before. You've got to live how you're to live now in God because you're in his kingdom. So that means if we are in the kingdom, we are also constantly turning, changing, and growing in how we live. Conversely, if we have not changed, if we do not actively change for the better, can we really say that Christ has made a difference? Can we say that we are living for the kingdom if the kingdom hasn't changed our living? That's our prayer, to study the kingdom, but also study the repentance that comes with living in the kingdom, especially as you read through Acts this week. We thank you for watching. Thank you for reading and for studying. It's our prayer that the timeless word of God will be your meditation all day today. Look at
Christmas.